Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today uh, we're going to be tackling a mystery that's been puzzling scientists and historians for decades. Oh yeah. The Dogon tribe's ancient knowledge of the Sirius star system. Sounds pretty interesting. It is. If you haven't heard about this, get ready to have your mind blown. Okay. Because we're about to explore some seriously intriguing connections between ancient wisdom and cutting edge science. I'm ready. Me too. Yeah. And hey, while you're getting settled in, yeah. don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome deep dives just like this one. All right, let's get started. Now let's get started. So tell me what makes this serious mystery so special. Well, the Dogon, an isolated tribe in West Africa, have possessed surprisingly detailed knowledge about Sirius B. Okay. A companion star to Sirius A for centuries. Uh -huh. The strange part is yeah. Sirius B is invisible to the naked eye. It wasn't even discovered by modern science until the 19th century. Wait, hold on. Yeah. They knew about a star we couldn't even see. It's crazy, right? Yeah. How is that even possible? That's the million dollar question. It's as if they had access to information that seems way beyond their technological capabilities. Right. It's a real head scratcher and it's led to all sorts of theories from ancient astronauts to lost civilizations. Okay, so we've got this ancient tribe with knowledge of a hidden star. Yes. Got it. Uh-huh. But I thought we were talking about some new scientific discoveries too. Right. What's the connection? That's where the Gaia space mission comes in. Okay. This incredible project is mapping over a billion stars in our galaxy with mind-blowing precision. Wow. And the data it's collecting is shedding new light on all sorts of cosmic mysteries. Okay. Including, potentially, yeah. the serious mystery. So is Gaia like a giant telescope in space? It's even cooler than that. Oh, wow. It's actually a spacecraft equipped with the most advanced instruments. Okay. Allowing it to measure the positions, movements, and even the compositions of stars with incredible accuracy. So it can tell us what stars are made of. Yeah. And here's the really cool part. It's sensitive enough to detect tiny wobbles in a star's motion. Wobbles? What do wobbles have to do with anything? Imagine a star is like a dancer. Okay. If it's dancing solo, it moves smoothly. Okay. But if it has a partner we can't see, uh -huh. that partner's gravity will make the star stumble a bit. Okay. Gaia can spot those stumbles. Yeah. And based on how a star wobbles, we can tell if there's a hidden companion. Oh, wow. And even how big and how far away it is. So like a cosmic dance battle. Uh-huh. Yeah, kind of. That's awesome. Uh. But how does this relate back to Sirius and the Dogon? Well, researchers have developed a special tool called Gaia PX. Gaia PMX? Yeah, Gaia PMX that analyzes Gaia data to look for these wobbles. Right. And they've used it to take a closer look at Sirius B. What did they find? Oh, don't leave me hanging. Uh huh. Okay. okay. What they found adds another layer to the mystery. The Dogon describes Sirius B as a small, heavy, and invisible star. Uh huh which is exactly what a white dwarf is. And Guy X detected significant wobbles in Sirius B's motion. Okay. Suggesting that something is tugging on it gravitationally. Okay, but couldn't that just be Sirius A, its known companion? It could be. Yeah. But the analysis couldn't rule out the possibility of another fainter companion orbiting closer to Sirius B. Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you saying there might be more to the Sirius system than we thought? Yeah. And here's where things get really wild. Okay. The Dogon also claim there's a third star in the system. Okay. Which they call Emeya. Emeya. And they say there's a planet orbiting it. Hold up. Are you serious? A third <laughs> star? Yep. A planet. And that's what the Dogon have maintained for centuries. And while Guy Panks doesn't definitively confirm Emeya, right. it does show that we can't rule out the possibility of an additional companion. Okay, my mind is officially blown. I know, right? So we've got ancient stories of a hidden star, yeah. cutting edge science, confirming that there might be even more to the system, yeah, uh -huh. and a tribe that might have known about all of this centuries ago. It's amazing, isn't it? This is getting good. But how can we be sure this isn't just a coincidence? Uh -huh. I mean, how could the Dogon have known any of this without telescopes or computers? Well, that's what we'll be exploring in the rest of this deep dive. Okay. We'll delve into more details about the Dogon's knowledge. Right. Look at other evidence from the Gaia mission and try to piece together this cosmic puzzle. All right. I'm hooked. Can't wait to see where this goes. <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone, because we're just getting started. It's going to be good. I know it is. Welcome back, deep divers. Last time we left off with some pretty mind-boggling questions about the Dogon tribe's knowledge of the Sirius star system. Yeah, we were talking about how the Gaia mission might be backing up some of their claims about hidden companions around Sirius B. 
right. a star they supposedly knew about centuries before modern astronomers. Exactly. And we left off wondering, how could they possibly have known this stuff without any fancy telescopes or computers? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here? What else can help us solve this cosmic puzzle? To really understand just how incredible the Dogon's knowledge is, we need to dive into the specifics of what they claimed about Sirius B. Okay. They didn't just say it existed. Right. They had some surprisingly accurate details about it. Like what? Give me the juicy details. Well, for one thing, they knew about its orbital period. Orbital period. Refresh my memory on what that is again. It's basically the time it takes for one celestial object to make a complete orbit around another. Okay. Like how Earth takes 365 days to go around the sun. Right. The Dogon claimed that Sirius B takes roughly 50 years to orbit Sirius A. Okay, 50 years, is that even close to being right? Hold on to your hats, because this is where it gets really wild. Okay. Modern astronomers have measured the orbital period of Sirius B, and guess what? It's uh, 50.05 years. No way. Mm. They were practically spot on. How could they have possibly known that? It's not like they were watching it through a telescope and counting the years. Exactly. And that's what makes this so baffling. Yeah. It suggests they had some other way of knowing, some knowledge that seems to go against everything we understand about ancient astronomy. This is getting weirder and weirder by the minute. So they knew the orbital period, but was there anything else? Oh, there's more. Okay. The Dogon also described the shape of Sirius B's orbit. Okay. They said it was elliptical with Sirius A located at one of the foci of the ellipse. Okay, now you're just using big words to make my head spin. Elliptical orbits, foci was this common knowledge back then. Not at all. It wasn't until Johannes Kepler came along in the 17th century that the concept of elliptical orbits became a thing in Western science. Right. That's centuries after the Dogon supposedly had this knowledge. So let me get this straight. Yeah. The Dogon knew about an invisible star, its orbital period, with incredible accuracy. And they even understood the concept of elliptical orbits. It's pretty amazing. All centuries before modern science caught up. This is a lot to process. What are the possible explanations for all of this? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? There are a few theories out there, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. I right, hit me with them. One of the most popular theories, and probably the most exciting, is the idea of ancient contact with extraterrestrial beings. Like aliens. You're saying aliens might have visited the Dogon and shared their cosmic secrets. It's a fascinating idea. It is. People who support this theory point to the Dogon's detailed descriptions of the Sirius system. Right. It seems like information that would have been impossible for them to figure out on their own, especially without any advanced technology. So maybe it was like a cosmic download of knowledge from some super advanced alien civilization? Maybe. I can see why people find that idea compelling, but... Is there any actual evidence to support it? That's where things get tricky. How so? There's no concrete, undeniable proof of alien contact. It's mostly based on interpretations of the Dogon's traditions and how well they seem to align with modern scientific discoveries. So it's more of a what-if scenario than a proven fact. Yeah, pretty much. That makes sense. Are there any other explanations that are a bit more down-to-earth? There are. Some researchers believe the Dogon might have acquired their knowledge through cultural diffusion. Meaning they learned it from other cultures who were already pretty advanced in astronomy? Exactly. The Dogons weren't completely isolated throughout history. They had contact with other civilizations like Arab traders and explorers right. who were known for their astronomical knowledge. So it's possible some of that knowledge... Yep. Perhaps about Sirius found its way into Dogon traditions over time. That makes sense. But if they just heard it from someone else, how did they manage to keep the details so accurate, especially over such a long period of time? That's a great question. And it's one of the reasons why this theory also has its skeptics. They argue that it's pretty unlikely for complex astronomical information to be passed down so precisely through generations of oral tradition, right. especially without any written records. Yeah. It would be like playing a game of telephone where the message changes a little bit each time it's repeated. It's hard to imagine how the details wouldn't have gotten muddled up over time. Yeah, I see their point. So alien visitors and cultural exchange, those are two pretty big theories. Are there any other explanations we should consider? There is one more idea that's been floating around, and it focuses on the Dogon's own observations of the night sky, combined with their deep understanding of their environment. Are you saying they might have figured out all this stuff about Sirius just by looking up at the stars? That seems like a long shot. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. 
But the Dogons were known to be incredibly skilled observers of the stars. They meticulously tracked their movements and had a sophisticated understanding of celestial cycles and how those cycles affected their lives. But even with all that, could they have really deduced the orbital period and the elliptical shape of Sirius B's orbit without any telescopes? That's a tough one. While the Dogons were undoubtedly amazing observers, it's hard to imagine how they could have gathered such precise information about an invisible star using only their naked eyes and traditional knowledge. Yeah, that one feels like a stretch to me, too. So we've got three main theories, alien visitors, cultural exchange, and incredible observation skills. It sounds like we've got a lot of pieces to this puzzle, but we're not quite sure how they fit together yet. Where do we go from here? Well, that's where the Gaia mission comes back into play. You see, it's not just revealing new information about the Sirius system, it's also changing our understanding of the universe as a whole. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. How does this all tie together? All right, we're back for the final part of our deep dive into the Sirius mystery. Last time we were talking about those different theories, trying to explain how the Dogon knew so much about Sirius B. Right. We had aliens, cultural exchanges, super observers, but... None of them quite fit perfectly. Then you mentioned that the Gaia mission is giving us a whole new perspective on things. That's right. Gaia isn't just helping us understand the Sirius system better. It's revealing that the universe is even more complex and surprising than we ever imagined. Okay, I'm all ears. How so? Give me some examples. We'll take the star HD 1114762, for example. Okay. For years, astronomers thought it had a massive planet orbiting it, like 11 times the mass of Jupiter. Huge. Oh. But when they analyzed the data from Gaia, they yeah. realized something wasn't adding up. What do you mean? What did Gaia show? Gaia showed that the stars wobble. Remember, that's how we detect hidden companions. Right. Was too strong for it to be caused by a planet, even a giant one. Okay. It was like the companion was much heavier than they initially thought. So Gaia basically called out a cosmic mistake. Exactly. Yeah. Further analysis using that Gaia Pemex tool we talked about earlier confirmed that the companion wasn't a gas giant planet at all, but another star. Oh, wow. Likely a red dwarf. Okay. It was a total case of mistaken identity. Wow. So even with our modern telescopes, we can still get things wrong. It makes you wonder, what else are we missing out there? It's a humbling thought, isn't it? It is. And that's just one example. Gaia has also helped confirm the existence of planets around other stars, like GJ832, which has a Jupiter-like planet. So Gaia isn't just correcting our mistakes, it's also confirming what we already knew. That's right. It's like it's double-checking our homework and filling in even more details. It's really revolutionizing our understanding of what's out there in the universe. Okay, so we've got this incredible mission that's revealing hidden companions correcting our assumptions and giving us a much clearer picture of the cosmos. But how does all of this connect back to the Dogon and their mysterious knowledge of Sirius? That's the key question, isn't it? These Gaia discoveries highlight a crucial point. Mm -hmm. We're still learning, and there's always the possibility of finding something unexpected, something that challenges our current understanding. So even though we haven't found definitive proof of that third star that Dogon talked about, Emia, and its planet, doesn't mean they're not out there. Exactly. Gaia is showing us that hidden companions are more common than we ever thought. What we see with our telescopes is just a tiny glimpse of what's really out there swirling around in the vastness of space. It's like the universe is full of these hidden dance partners <laughs> and Gaia is helping us spot them. It's a beautiful analogy. And it brings us back to the Dogon. Their knowledge passed down through generations might be giving us a peek into these hidden corners of the universe places we're only beginning to explore with modern science. Are we are we ready to, to delve back into the extraterrestrial realm and, and explore Robert Temple's theory in more detail? Let's do it. You got it. We're not just here to entertain. We're here to learn, to question, and to really explore the boundaries of, of what we know or think we know. So buckle up, because we're about to enter the realm of uh, ancient astronauts and the, the tantalizing possibility that uh, that we are not alone in the universe. Stay tuned for part three, where we dive deep into the heart of the serious mystery. Welcome back to the deep dive where, uh, well, we're, we're on this quest to unravel the serious mystery. But now it's time to to face the, the elephant in the spaceship, or should I say the Nomo in the Ark. Right. We're finally tackling Robert Temple's theory head on. Did the Dogon get their knowledge of the Sirius system from uh, extraterrestrial visitors? This is where the serious mystery really uh leaps from the realm of, of anthropology and astronomy into the realm of, uh, well, 
speculation and, and let's face it, yeah. pure science fiction excitement. It's it's a theory that has uh, captivated imaginations for decades. Well, okay, so let's let's break it down. Okay. Temple's argument hinges on the Dogon's beliefs about the Nomos, these uh, these amphibious beings that supposedly came from uh, Sirius. Right. What exactly do the Dogon say about these Nomos and how do they fit into the bigger picture of the Sirius mystery? So the Dogon, they describe the Nomos as these uh, wise and benevolent beings. Okay. Um, and they arrived on Earth in an ark that landed with this this great rush of wind, bringing knowledge and civilization to to humanity. They're often depicted as uh, fish-like creatures, maybe reflecting uh, their supposed aquatic origins on a planet in the Sirius system. Fish-like aliens bringing knowledge to Earth. Okay, that's it's a pretty wild concept. Dude. Right. I can see how it really taps into that that ancient astronaut archetype that's so popular in our culture. Yeah. So Temple sees a direct link between the Nomos and the Dogon's knowledge of uh, Sirius B. He's suggesting that they were the teachers, the the cosmic professors who shared this this advanced astronomical information. Exactly. Yeah. He he argues that the Dogon's knowledge of Sirius B, particularly its density, orbital period, and gravitational significance, is is just far too precise, far too advanced to have been acquired through any earthly means. He believes the Nomos, these extraterrestrial visitors, were the source sharing this cosmic knowledge with uh, the Dogon ancestors centuries ago. It's a compelling narrative. Uh, you know, I have to admit, there's a part of me, that sci-fi loving part, that that really wants to hold on to that that sense of wonder, that uh, that possibility that something extraordinary might be at play here. I understand. I, I get that. The serious mystery, despite, you know, the lack of uh, hard evidence, continues to really fascinate us because it it taps into something fundamental, you know, mm. our curiosity about the universe, our place in it, and and the possibility that we're not alone. It's that it's that age old question, isn't it? Are we alone? Mm -hmm. And and the serious mystery, whether you believe in uh, ancient astronauts or not, forces us to to really confront that question and yeah. to consider the uh, the possibility that our our history, our understanding of the cosmos might be far more complex and mysterious than we currently imagine. Precisely, yeah. And and that's the power of a good mystery, right? Uh, it, it sparks our imagination. It pushes us to think critically. And it reminds us that there's still so much we just we don't know about the universe and, and our place in it. So even without concrete scientific proof, the Dogon story is still important because it reminds us that there's so much more to learn and discover. It's a call to keep an open mind question what we think we know and be prepared to be amazed by what the universe throws our way. Well said. This has been an incredible journey. We've explored ancient knowledge, cutting-edge science, and the mind-blowing mysteries of the Sirius star system. It really has. Even though we may not have all the answers, one thing is for sure the universe is full of wonders just waiting to be uncovered. Absolutely. Who knows what other secrets Gaia and future missions will reveal, and what other ancient wisdom might be waiting to be rediscovered and maybe even confirmed by science. It's an exciting time to be a space explorer, both in the realm of science and in the realm of ancient knowledge. Uh -huh. Thanks for joining us on this incredible deep dive. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more explorations of the most fascinating corners of knowledge. Until next time, keep looking up and keep questioning everything.